Yes. He has traveled with my husband and myself and others to Mexico and Europe and on cruises. It's an honor for me to lead this service. Bill was not a religious person and he did not want a minister or a priest. He asked if I felt comfortable enough to conduct the service. I've only done 10 or 15, so <laughs> I, I, I've had a little bit of experience. But it, it is an honor for me to lead the service. Now, if you've not already done so, please turn off your cell phones so we don't get interrupted. On behalf of Bill's family, thank you for sharing your time with us as we celebrate a life well lived and lived to the fullest. Bill made the decision to discontinue his cancer treatments and accept his pending death with grace and dignity when he learned the cancer was in control. He had fought it for over a year. He had taken chemo and radiation and didn't want to go through the sickness that accompanies the chemo or the radiation again. He said, enough is enough. He wanted quality of life rather than quantity. My husband, Sergio Madden, had the privilege of caring for Bill in our home for the last three and one half weeks of his life. During that time, he made his final arrangements. He selected his casket from Costco.com. <laughs> He selected his pallbearers. He was very choosy. He selected the, the clothing he would wear, the music for today, and he wrote his own obituary. Everything down to the last detail. True to himself. A true type A. A testament to his character with the constant flow of friends in and out of our house to share with their love, and Bill to say their goodbyes. Friends and family came from near and far, as far away as Europe, to spend time with him, to share stories and to share laughs. You know, grief is a most peculiar thing. We are so helpless in the face of it. It's like a window that simply opens of its own accord. The room grows cold, we can do nothing but shiver. But it opens a little less each time. The grief becomes a little less severe as time passes. But the window for the grief opens a little less each time, and still the next day we wonder what has become of it. It's gone. Now everyone grieves in their own way, in their own manner, in their own time. There is no right way, there is no wrong way. Some people grieve for weeks, days, months, some for years. But there is no right way. It's very personal. Life's journey doesn't end in death. Death, death is just a pathway that we all must take. What we once enjoyed and deeply loved we can never lose. For all that we love deeply becomes a part of us. Life is pleasant. Death is peaceful. It's that dark transition that's troublesome. Mm -hmm. There is only one happiness in this life, to love and be loved. Phil and Bill lived full lives. They had many long friendships lasting 30, 40, and 50 plus years as evidenced by people that have joined us here. Some of the people here have known Bill for over 50 years. Some, like me, are rather new to him. I only met him in 2009. When, when Bill talked to you, he looked you directly in the eye. His facial expression showed his compassion and feeling for what you were saying. Many people walk in and out of our lives but only true friends leave footprints in our heart. Bill was truly one of those people. Throughout his life, Bill laughed often and loved much. He gained my respect and love and the same of many. He filled his niche 
and accomplished his task. He leaves the world better than he found it. He never lacked appreciation for others, looked for good in them, and gave the best he had. He was a true gentleman and friend. Per Bill's request, Sergio Rodriguez, my husband, will read a poem at this time that was written by Bill's sister, Leah, for him at Christmas time in 1982. Sergio, please. Hello, everyone. I had an incredible pleasure of knowing Bill for nearly 40 years. I was one of those lucky few that were very close to him, so my buddy. Leah wrote this. Um, it was actually not even two, but eight times. And um, Bill asked me personally to read it, um, to share his beautiful poem that, that she wrote for him. And it goes, it's titled My Brother. With all the words the poets say, with all the songs that have been sung, not one of them, my brother dear, have said that you're the one. But in my heart, I'm sure you know that with each rising sun, when you were born, my brother dear, my world had just begun. And as the years pass on and on, the treasures they do hold, but nothing's like the years ahead, where they are just like gold. We played, we laughed, we cried, we fought, but just think of all the things we've been taught. Day by day, We've learned to grow, and you know what? I think it shows that as, as the time goes by, year by year, there's no one like you, my brother dear. Thank you. Thank you. In planning this service, Bill asked two of his dear friends to eulogize him. He was very particular with who he asked, and he even discussed what he wanted them to say. <laughs> you know, he was a true type A, and he wanted to be in control. <laughs> even though he was living in our home with us, he still had control. He decided what he was going to eat, and when he was going to eat. He decided what television shows he was going to watch and when he was going to go to bed to sleep. He was very, very particular, but we had the dear pleasure of sharing our home with him. At this time, I'd like to ask Victor Bishop Williams to come forward, and then he will be followed by Daniel Coleman, who they both will eulogize him.
and just hoped that he had dealt in the same way. Well, he did, and 41 years later, with all the ups and downs of life, we were still the best of friends. You know when you make a new friend how you hope that you have something in common so that the friendship is genuine and fun for everyone? Well, it was. It was a very genuine friendship. This was a perfect friendship, and Michael and I always thought we were destined to meet Bill. I'm sure many of you feel here feel the same way. Bill was a mentor and a role model to both of us. He was a successful businessman with his own accounting business. He owned a beautiful home, drove beautiful cars, and had an amazing loving relationship. With all this success, Bill always put his family first. He loved his dad, Luther, and idolized his mom, Margie. God bless them both and may they rest in peace. His sister, Leah, was his best friend in life. It was wonderful being around the two of them. So much laughter and fun always. And he was so proud of his nieces, Karen and Jennifer. He loved talking about their accomplishments, all they had done, and it made him so happy and proud. Michael and I did not have family at the time living in California. So Bill welcomed Michael and I into his family. And it was a magical time filled with amazing memories that we will never forget. Then there was his husband, Phil. <laughs> Bill loved Phil so very much. I loved hearing the story of their courtship and how in the end he followed his heart and it was the right decision. Bill worshipped the ground Phil walked on. In time of a few role models in our community, from a relationship standpoint, there were none better than Bill and Phil. The unconditional love these two had has inspired many family members and friends they have included in their lives. Through the good, the hard, the sad, and the momentous times, they always knew they could count on each other without a doubt. I know Bill was waiting at Heaven's Gate with arms wide open, waiting for Bill. One of the many things we had in common was our anniversary day. In September of every year, we would always celebrate our anniversaries together. Bill loved having events with us like garage sales and other things that we would use to make money from the garage sales to go somewhere really fancy, like a Beverly Hills restaurant. And we thoroughly enjoyed that. And if you know Bill at all, you know he had a huge passion for USC football. He attended USC and was very involved with the university after graduating. Bill loved his USC football. We always enjoyed hearing about the football games that he enjoyed so much. Bill had so many other passions as well. He loved cars, long vacations, great food and drink. He just loved life. Bill was a great listener, fantastic. He would talk about the things I had gone on in my life, like when people were not so nice or corporate politics. And he would always say, Victor, be strong and be who you are. Be your authentic self and you will do well in life. He said growing up, that's what he did in life. And I really valued his advice and felt no matter what, he was always in my corner, rooting me on. Bill did not have a jealous bone in his body. He wanted everyone to be happy, successful, and live their lives as they wanted. Another thing Bill had was he would always greet you with one of those wonderful hugs. Bill had the best hug of anyone I have ever known in my life. It was long strong, affectionate, friendly, loving, and warm. And I will miss that. One of my favorite memories of Bill was going to a party at his home and watching Bill, Leah, and Mom interact. They were like three musketeers. The love you could see between them was so magical. I could watch them all night long. When Michael and I had our children, Joseph and Justin, Bill was so excited, he was the first one over to meet them. Bill was there for us, supporting us, cheering us on. He was family. Justin and Joseph loved their Uncle Bill unconditionally, to this day. Bill was a nurturer and loved by all his nieces and nephews. Bill would speak of his dreams, 
We spoke often about retiring and how we would love to live in Palm Springs because so many of his good friends would be there. We would talk about how he was looking forward to seeing his nieces grow up and be successful. He would talk about traveling and spending time with his sister Leah. And of course about going to all the USC games with his buddies. He'd love talking about that. He would make me laugh and tell me that he was looking forward to Michael and I retiring so we could hang out, buy some locking chairs, <laughs> and reflect on our wonderful life. We were looking forward to that too. As I'm writing this over days, it made me reflect on my own life and what's truly important. There are only a handful of people who come into your world and touch your life in a dramatic fashion. Some of these people are just flickers of light, while a few are constant glow for a lifetime. For Michael, myself, and our family, and I'm sure for many of you, Bill was a constant glow that made a huge difference. He was who he was, no one else. A pure soul. He believed in God. He believed good always took out evil. He believed in family first. He believed in love and true friendship. If you were lucky enough to know Bill, you were blessed beyond imagination. I would like to end by reading a poem that expresses how I am feeling at the loss of one of my best friends in life. My best friend. Today I found a friend who knows everything I felt. He knew my every weakness and the problems I've been dealt. He understood my wonders and listened to my dreams. He listened to how I felt about life and love and knew what it all means. Not once did he interrupt me or tell me I was wrong. He understood what I was going through and promised he'd stay long. I reached out to this friend to show him I care, to pull him close and let him know how much I need him there. I went to hold his hand, to pull him nearer, and realized that this perfect friend I found was no longer there. Bill, I love you, I miss you, you have graced my life and so many others that you will ever know. God bless you, my friend. Peace be with you forever. Amen.
They were yin and yang, black and white, but throughout their time together, they were two peas in a pod. Always in love, always caring and taking care of each other. As Victor said, they were perfect role models of a loving relationship. They must be so happy to finally be back together in each other's arms. When I first started to think about what I would say today, I thought that I would regale you with stories about how we met, the adventures we shared, and all of that. Then I realized that almost everyone has similar stories, similar anecdotes, because that's who Bill was. He was a magnet that attracted good, wonderful people, genuine people, loving people, naturally gravitated to him. Never in my life have I had the joy of knowing a more sincere human being. Bill was an honest, tell me if you've heard this one before, compassionate, trusting, and giving person. He was steadfast in his loyalty to family and friends alike. He was always there, come what may, with a kind word and an it'll be all right attitude. Whether it was to celebrate one of life's many joyful moments or to console us, during one of life's frequent challenges. A smile on his face and a soothing calmness in his voice. I should have put a bigger print. <laughs> Family and friends meant the most to him. Then there was Lucy, his special girl. A distant third was, as Victor said, his love of USC football. There was a stretch of 20 years where we had season seats to every home game. If it was all Saturday, Bill and I were either at the Coliseum or in front of a TV together, cheering or consoling our team. It was always easy to figure out what mood Bill would be in on Sunday, just get the score from Saturday. <laughs> Let's not forget the 30 years of Boxing Day parties, the tiki parties, the get-togethers on Lincoln Avenue, the cruises, bingo with Mom and Fran, the bar businesses, all the laughs and all the memories. What best exemplifies the beauty of Bill to me was in his waning days. The countless parade of friends, some of whom preceded even my 42 years with him, coming to spend time. Watching the cavalcade of people of all different stripes and flavors who came to his bedside these past few weeks, it was obvious that with him, love in all of its expressions was ubiquitous. To Bill, Love was all that mattered. Listening to everyone reminiscing about their times together made me appreciate even more the impact he had on so many. The way he helped plan his own funeral. The treasures he bestowed upon us and the joy he brought to so many. And the joy that it brought to him to do so. His need to have everything organized, planned out and paid for, so that we would not have to worry once he was gone. I have to tell you, that part was a little unique for me. Mm -hmm. Laughing and joking about what to most was a sorrowful event. Bill was not sad, he was stoic. He was consuming the love that surrounded him. If he was in pain, I couldn't see it. He willed himself to smile and to be strong so that we too would be smiling and strong. Bill, my man, as you walk through the pearly gates of heaven, I'm certain that St. Peter will be heard to say, there goes a tremendous human being and the best friend you could ever have. We love you, Bill. Thank goodness you are no longer suffering and that you are finally reunited with the loves of your life. Give them all hugs for us. With thanks to Charlie Booth and Kid and Wiz Khalifa, there will be some long days ahead without you, my friend. But we will keep your memory and your legacy of love alive in our hearts. I'll tell you all about them when we see each other again. Fight on, Bill. Bye. Bye for now.
like to invite anyone that would like to say a few words to come forward, or I can bring the microphone to you. Is there anyone that is game? It's game. How can you talk what's already been said? <laughs> I'd like for you all to please join, uh, stand and join me in reciting the 23rd Psalm that you will find inside the program. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup with my Lord. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. This completes the chapel service. Yes, please remain standing as Bill's casket is moved to the hearse by the pallbearers. 